Go for it. Friggin' what up, dude? Um, Strider Wilson, I'm the host of this podcast that's mine. It's gonna be called History is Nice. History is nice. Friggin' what up, dude? Welcome back to another ep of History is Dank! Dude, freaking fired up for this episode, dude. We got Aaron beasting it on the sticks, dude. What up, Aaron? What up? <laughs> dude, I got a skateboard, dude. Dude, I went to a skate shop, dude. Yeah. As a fully grown adult, me and like 12 year olds in there, and then parents who didn't want to be in there. And I was like, dude, I need a new deck, dude. Got myself a nice alien workshop deck, which I used to think wasn't chill, but now it's sick. Mm-hmm. And dude, I suck at skating, dude. Did you do doing stuff in your adult body that you used to do in a kid body? Different. Yeah. Wobbly. Yeah. Injuries waiting to happen, dude. Like I'm, I do not have health insurance, dude. This was a bad choice, dude. Definite buyer's remorse. But look, dude. You know I got some Venture Trilite trucks, dude. Some Spitfire bearings, dude, and, and wheels, dude. So I'm just feeling pretty sick about it, and you know. It's a sick deck, but you know what it might just become? Decor. Wall art. Yeah. 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 Why? I Fucking, mean. Fucking, I'm a poser now, dude. May I ask why did you do this? Dude, I, I chalked it up to being like, I'm having a midlife crisis, but I'm not even in my midlife yet. So I was like, nigga, no. I'm just having a crisis. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just having a straight up crisis where I was like, dude, I want to have like. I want it to have something sick, you know, like a Zen thing to just skate chill just you can cruise around the neighborhood i think you know what inspired me dude was i started watching old school skate videos which maybe i should do a history of skate videos dude because i remember welcome to hell was like iconic and 411 vm dude but uh and that's kind of like what prank stuff came out of like jackat was all like origin like can't kill yourself yeah yeah cky exactly so that would be a sick up but i was watching some of those but then there's also this dude on my street who just looks like he's living the best life where he has a big ass dog and he's on a sick ass board and his dog just pulls him dude on their walk and i'm like dude sonny should pull me granted sonny's only 19 pounds sonny's not a big dog yeah dude sonny would not be able to pull me dude i would really need like i would need like a sector nine or a gravity board that one of those things that just like rolls yeah also i suck i can't stop well you know so this was a mistake but (laughs) You know, here's the thing, dude. You live, you learn, bro. You you don't take shots. You don't take swings. You don't get out there. All I'm saying is I'm just glad I didn't break a wrist, you know, crack an elbow, split my dome, because you know. And look, for the kids listening out there, this is a mistake. You should wear a helmet, dude. Get one of those ProTech helmets. Those are sick. You know, a river rafting helmet, sick. But, you know, I wasn't wearing a helmet. I was, like, wearing a beanie. Still, it's been 110 degrees out. I mean, I'm just making all <laughs> sorts of bad choices right now, dude. So. Yeah. Yeah, you shouldn't be doing any of that. You know, just... Yeah, here's the thing. Here's a rule, dude. If you have Invisalign like I do, you shouldn't be skateboarding. (laughs) (laughs) If you have Invisalign, dude, you can't do extreme stuff, you know? (laughs) So, you know, maybe, like, renting a city, like, one of those city bikes that you use a credit card to get around on, like, that's about as risky as you can get. Yeah. Taking a flat bike ride around town, dude, that's, that's as risky as you can get, dude. No vert. Here's the thing, I just wanted to kickflip, dude. I've, I've never been able to kickflip. I've come close. I could pop shove it. I could ollie, but, you know. I could, That's fairly, you can't break as much when you're just standing still. If you're trying to kickflip onto something or off of something, then you got a problem. No. Oh, yeah. No, I'm not even, yeah. There's, that's just completely outside the realm of you possibility. Can't, you can't shatter an ankle just stand up trying to kickflip. True. True, but don't put anything past me, dude. That's true. I won't. Also, you know who's not getting enough respect now that I've been skateboarding is like, I might have said this before, but just people that can do flips, like from on the ground. Oh yeah, yeah. Not into a pool, like no. you know. There's always the kid that can just do a flip. Yep. That's unbelievable. If you're an adult <sighs> and you can like do a flip or like a backflip, like that's that's something that I in my life I'll never experience. I forget know? the kid's name, but yeah, he was he. We're just like do it, do it. Just do a backflip. Like, Dude, you probably know what his name was. Scotty. All kids named Scotty can do flips. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, if your I name's almost, Scotty, you do flips. 
I almost want to say his name was Chester, and we ignored that because he could do a flip. You're right. He didn't get bullied. Yeah, he yeah. should have been being punched in the arm, but instead he was flipping. He flipped. He inverted his life situation, just like his body. Fucking beautiful, dude. Yeah. Hell yeah, dude. Well, dude, we got a pretty gnarly topic today. Just some straight up, like, somewhat hardcore history, dude, because, you know, my boy Dan Carlin kind of covered this stuff, too, which was, I was inspired. But someone wrote in um, for this. I forget her. It was a lady. I forget her name. Maybe Alyssa. I don't remember. Anyway, dude, um, wrote in with this suggestion. I was like, all right, sick, dude. So I, I checked it out, and it's about uh, something called the Golden Horde which is pretty gnarly, dude. So I'm excited to dive into that today, dude. But before we dive into that, dude, I got to give a shout out to Dadgrass, dude. This episode is brought to you by Dadgrass. It's legal organic hemp that relaxes your body and mellows your dome, dude. Right now, Dadgrass is offering smokable, actually, well, always, because they're my favorite, pre-rolled joints and CBD tinctures for those smooth summer days, dude. I've been fired up posting up. You know, I'm all about the pre-rolls, dude. I'm, dude, I'm all about wearing right now, and if you're watching the pod, button downs dude so it's been hot in la dude I, I undo the buttons dude you know i'm on my balcony dude sorry neighbors so you got to see that chest lettuce but i'll tell you right now i'm enjoying that dad grass out on the balcony dude i'm on the third floor you know and just post it up chilling dude so i'd hop on board and right now uh, dad grass is offering listeners 20 percent off your first order at dadgrass.com slash dank go to dadgrass.com slash dank for 20 percent off your first order that's dadgrass.com slash dank all right dude Let's let's dive into the Golden Horde. Do you know, Aaron, have you ever heard of the Golden Horde? I've never heard of it. I've heard of something close to it. Okay. So what it is... <laughs> yeah, dude, the Golden Shower. No, it's not the, the Golden Horde. The, it's, <laughs> yes, indeed. Yeah. What's it called? This is convertible Craig energy. You know, the Golden Horde. Let me tell you right now. <clears throat> I like to cruise up and get myself some opium because I still do opium. The only guy. I smoke it, some old school like that, and uh, I like to go out to Central California, the Imperial Valley, and uh, get myself a couple of prostitutes, uh, golden whores as I like to call them, and uh, get real illicit up there in this uh, piece of land that uh, one of my roommates from college has. He's dead now, still owns it, though has the title, I found it, and I just go up there and do what I like. And look, I pay to play, you know, I got a code, but let me tell you right now, this type of stuff, ho ho, wouldn't even be legal on the high seas. I'm a sick fucking guy, convertible Craig. <laughs> and I don't drive a convertible, no. I uh, actually drive a, um, a 92 Corolla. And uh, it's got, you know, those cardboard windows. And um, I live in it. Yeah, I'm a sad guy. <laughs> <laughs> yup, I just park outside an abandoned mini putt golf course. And, uh, there's a drain pool there, and every once in a while I'll just lay out in there, you know, get into the earth. I like to live like a spider. I have a hole. <laughs> <laughs> that went down a strange road. But I'll tell you right now, the road that the Golden Horde went down was a gnarly one. Tops and turns, ups and downs. Um, what it was, and its etymology, golden, you know, uh, maybe comes from... Um, this name, like for the yellow tents that they used, like that the leaders used and stuff like that, but it's really not sure. Um, really what it was is like after Genghis Khan or Genghis Khan died, uh, he split up his empire, which was the largest land-based uh, empire in the entire world. I mean, dude, they almost sailed, they had ships, dude. They almost sailed to Japan and conquered it, but they were kind of over it, dude. They are like, nah, dude, we like horses, dude, not boats. And... They, uh, once Geng Genghis Khan dies, he dies in, uh, 1368. Um, oh no, that, sorry, this is the Mongol Empire, sorry. Mongol Empire from 1206 to 1368. Um, Genghis Khan dies and he splits up his empire. He dies in 1227. And this is all common era. And he splits up his empire among his four sons. And he splits them up into things called a Apanages, dude. Apanages, dude. A P P A N A G E. Don't even know how to say that, dude. But yeah. really, what it is is it's a it's land or some resource of revenue assigned for the maintenance of a member of the family or a ruling house. So very, you know, descent. This is very Orange County, dude. You know, a lot of apanages, dude, <laughs> in Orange County. Of like, look, Grandpa passed away. He's the guy who uh, started Sonic. You know, so 
friggin' Devin's gonna get the Sonics from Huntington to Seal Beach, and then, you know, Declan's gonna get the Sonics from Huntington down to, you know, Newport Coast, and then, um, you know, Sarah, our sister, um, when her husband, Declan also, but not related, his name's just also Declan, uh, <laughs> he will uh, uh, inherit the Sonics south of Newport Harbor through San Clemente down to the Marine, Marine Base. So I was gonna say the daughter gets the the Sonics in Los Angeles. Oh, there are none. Yeah, yeah. I mean, let's let's be honest. Sonic. I mean, it sucks, but they've got good drinks. Am I right? Yeah, it's fine. It's a fun experience. Once that's in a what while. I mean. But we've got the iconic spot, Bob's Big Boy. Yeah, which is right over here in Burbank. Yeah, which like that's like you know, old school Americana rollerblade up to you that type of stuff. They only do that. They only do the car hop. I yeah, think, once yeah, the little tray. Yeah, it's cool. So Great place, what, what, dude. What are those those years for the Mongol Empire again? The Mongol Empire, twelve oh six to thirteen sixty eight, Common Era. So he Genghis Khan dies in twenty seven. Yeah, so he's pretty early on. He dies. Yeah, he's like the conqueror, and then his sons continue to rule it, oh, wow. and in different areas, and um, they become. And we'll get into this. You know, Mongols didn't really care what religion you were. They just wanted you to pay taxes and die. <laughs> they like wanted <laughs> to conquer you. And uh, sounds familiar. Yeah, exa- exactly. And uh, but then you get this golden horde, and we'll use this as an example. And we'll talk a little bit about one of the other uh, fucking hordes. We'll just call them instead of me having to try to say the wrong appendage. <laughs> but they're called um, like kind of Khanates, and uh, and Khan is like just because that's the ruler there, like Genghis Khan is the ruler. Um, anyway, fucking the Golden Horde, where they're they're operating, and, and maybe someone suggested this, because they're the conquerors of Europe. Really, they go to Russia, and they could have gone farther, Poland, Hungary, but mainly they're the rulers over Russia, extending from the Middle East to Central Asia. Um, the Like the modern countries that they're they're operating in are like um russia ukraine kazakhstan moldova the caucus and uh but they're the the mongols if you don't know are people of the steppe the eurasian steppe it's like the desert above china obviously you know the great wall of china is to keep out the mongol invaders but they also were cruising west and and uh i mean that was like what kept their society going it was a you know sort of nomadic um culture a conquering culture but the, the the Golden Horde sort of uh, moves away from that. So Genghis Khan gives this to his um, son, Joki. Um, but Joki's eld- Joki dies, like J-O-C-H-I. I'm probably saying, by the way, I'm probably saying a lot of this shit wrong, dude. Just heads up, dude. Um, but then Joki dies. His eldest son, Batu, uh, inherits the Golden Horde. And... He just be, he becomes the first ruler, and dude, he's freaking charges straight up, dominating, dude. And we'll get into the military tactics, but you know, if you got to listen to Dan Carlin talk about the Mongol invaders, I've done it before, but it's just the best, dude. He's just talking about you have fifty thousand mounted warriors, each of them have five to six horses apiece. That's a quarter million horses stumbling down the hills. You hear thunder and the distance. It's unearthly noise, and you look up, you see a giant cloud rising in the distance what is this heavenly force it is a golden horde coming towards you and dude the um so of course they would overwhelm their enemy the best cavalry most skilled cavalry in the world and in fact they like inspire um you know european armies they inspire napoleon the tactics i'll get into that at the end um but you know then they would have rear guard action so like once they went through murdered everyone and or you know whoever was left to survive um and would then pay the taxes uh, if anyone was like hiding or anything like that, they'd send rear guard action to go back. They like invent, they don't invent, but they uh, really skillfully use like panzer maneuvers and flanking and they set their um, enemies up for ambushes very, very well just through like recon. And so they're just using legit ass tactics. It's not all just steamroll, although they do steamroll pretty friggin' well once they get moving, but it's planned. Um, so. They, they're cruising out, dude. Batu, he cruises out, dude. Takes over Russia, gets super far west. They can start freaking moving in. It doesn't even matter. But um, there's the death of, like, Guy, Guyuk Khan, who, like, takes over um, 
um Genghis Khan like the main dude he dies so then that sort of they they call this council which is like called a um cruel curry tali fucking a dude what up, council? k-u-r-i-l-t-a-i basically what it is it's like a high council assembly it's like a mongolian or turkic clans uh basically a tribal council is what we would call it i think um, i think you missed my joke wait what did you say i thought you asked how i spelled it no i said what up council <laughs> exactly dude chad and jt would be posted there they'd probably get their heads cut off dude They're like you've wasted our time um, or or they mellow them out with their with their love you're the right love that exudes the stoke you're right you know what why would i yeah exactly dude. and and but why probably, would the they probably get beheaded get they probably get beheaded though i mean if i'm a wagering man which i am i would say that's what would happen yeah, yeah, yeah. but look you know, they get their time in front of council, dude. <laughs> what up, frickin', frickin', what up, curl tie? Kareela tie? Um, they have to uh, announce a new, like, major ruler. So it slows things down. And, I mean, that death right there just changes the course of history because Batu would have just kept rolling. Who knows how? He probably could have gotten all the way to London and France. I see London. I see France. I see frickin' Mongols in your pants. And, but... Since he has to go back to this council, whatever, they're chilling. Um, they basically give Russia and all these other countries time to like sort of regroup and catch their breath. But they um, they do go back. They do march west again. But they never get quite as far as like they got all the way to like the Caspian Sea, I think, and um, the Aegean. You know, you got to look up at that geography up there. But they're freaking cruising. Um, they were known as in the Europe, the Golden Horde. You may have heard heard the term Tartars. That's the um, referring to the Golden Horde or the Mongols in you know that sort of Eastern European Slavic region, and that comes from the uh, Greek mythology. Tar Tartarus was the lowest point in the universe. It was the underworld, and they would say these people, br the Golden Horde, brings hell with it. So these Tartars are just hell bringers, which is pretty freaking gnarly, dude. And that's um, where the sauce comes from. Yeah, tartar, exactly, dude. The tartar sauce, because, who baby, wreaks hell on my digestive tract, let me tell you. Actually, a tartar sauce, pretty freaking dank. Yeah, yeah. It's like, basically, fish and chips is like, you're just, it's just a medium for eating that sauce. Yeah. Which is basically mayonnaise, right? Yeah, mayonnaise and relish. Like, and then aioli is just basically mayonnaise and spice, like garlic or mm -hmm. chipotle spice. Sure. Right? Mm hmm And guess what? It's freaking dank. Yeah not complaining yeah i mean i love it dude i'll put it all over i'll put it on anything dude. i'll put it on my butt dude i don't even care dude uh sometimes i like to imagine myself you know if i was a member of this golden horde living that lifestyle cruising around dude never i just like posting up dude i'd be like dude can we just post up here for a while yeah and i don't want to keep moving around actually maybe the golden horde would have been the best um apparage what the fuck was that word again dude Appanage for me to um it's a good safe word dude actually probably not because i can't say it my fans would be like what what like, Appanage! oh Appanage! Oh, oh, oh too late Appanage! Oh. she'd be like it's not how you say it bitch <laughs> <laughs> dude uh so maybe i would do the best with the golden horde because you actually get this pax mongolica um for the europeans who once the Mongols ruled and, you know, they went back to the what up council situation, part of the new ruler. Then Batu's coming back, dude. And in fact, this is like his brother, Burke. He continues because Baku dies and he continues. Um, uh, they have this era of Pax Mongolica and basically it's improved trade and communication routes, the flow of goods, of information, um, the justice system made life at funny enough less violent because i think the violence was so swift it's like wait dude did you did you talk back to your dad dead um so and i guess medieval europe before that was even worse like a lot of yeah we should get into medieval european i mean we've done the executions that they do these twisted dudes but um yeah what were like the lesser punishments i feel like it was always like lashings remember in the pirate episode it was like if you were like once they you're moved from serfdom away from serfdom and people were like kind of wandering and searching for new lives, like you got punished for that. It's like don't wander, don't explore, don't try to find. 
like now everyone goes to Europe to find themselves, funny enough. Yeah. But now it's like, if you were European back then, like, and you were trying to find your next life to support your family, like, you would just get whipped until bleeding in the street. Like, that was literally written into English law. So, and that was like hundreds of years. That was literally 500 years after this. So, <laughs> freaking God only knows what was going down, dude. So, Batu died. Yeah, he's dead, dude. You know how? Uh, I don't think it was a battle. I think he just fucking... Skateboard. <laughs> dude, he had a crisis, bro. He was just trying to kickflip, dude. Just on the on the step, dude. You know, he's like the Eurasian step. He tried to kickflip like a seven Eurasian step, grind a rail outside of a library. Just got fucking murdered, dude. Yep. No helmet. Turns out, yeah, exactly. Turns out it was a religious thing, so he got executed. Okay. And that actually leads us into this next thing because Burke, he's a Muslim, dude. Oh boy. So. He was put at odds with this guy, Huleji Khan, who's, I think, like, one of the dudes appointed at that What Up Council. Um, oh, no, no, sorry. No, he's not. He's mainly the main leader. At this point, there is no, like, Genghis Khan. Like, no one ever becomes Genghis Khan, but it's like you'll be, like, the main dude if you're one of the four, like, uh, horde leaders. And he, ha or a, a Khanate, I should say, the four Khanates. Like, the Golden Horde is just one of the Khanates. It's like the um, Caucus Khanate. But you have the Il Khanate, which is, like... Um, that's like the Iraq, Iran, like the ma the main um, part of the empire. And this guy, Hulge Khan, um, he conquers, conquers Iraq and Iran, and um, he becomes one of the four main powers of the Mongol Empire. He sacks the great Muslim city of Baghdad. And the fact that now you have Burke is Muslim. Uh, Hulge kills the last Abbasid, uh, which is like Abbasid Caliph. You have these rulers, like after following Muhammad, you have like... Um, I forget which uh, like main family of caliphs, of rulers that continue that lineage. There was one before the Abbasid. I forget what it was called. But um, anyway, they uh, he takes out the last Abbasid cal caliph. Mongols conquer down there. Golden Horde and the Ilkhanate border each other in the Caucasus. So it's kind of like, dude, this is sort of, they've got beef over in that region, dude. War breaks out between these two parts. This makes the European powers happy because the Mongols are busy kind of fighting each other. And it's sort of this religious war, which is interesting going on, which is like a first for, for the Mongols. You know, really it was like, let's conquer you. We'll murder you. We'll steal your women. We'll, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll have sex with your horses and ride off on your women. <laughs> and then you have um, this sort of religious battle going on, and which is pretty gnarly, but it gives the Russians and the other nations that are being occupied by the Mongols uh, and, and conquered at this point. Uh, a little bit of respite, which comes into play later. Um, but basically the big takeaway is Burke makes the first, the first Mongol prince to convert to Islam um, in the Golden Horde at the, basically following this entire point is, is a Islamic uh, faction of the Mongol empire. Prior to that, it, it was mainly, you know, you were Buddhist, um, you know, maybe some other whatever religion, maybe some pagan stuff going on, but mainly just Buddhism. Um, uh, however, Uzbeg Khan, he's a dude who uh, proclaims Islam as the official religion of the Golden Horde. Burke is the one who makes the first step, but Uzbeg, who uh, inherits the Horde, um, he's the one who really, really sets it over. And he keeps Russian princes subservient and divide it by playing them against each other. So now the Golden Horde is just straight up at this point, and this is around, um, this is 13, Uzbek takes over in 1313 to 1341. At this point, the Golden Horde is no longer like seeking to conquer. They're not moving any farther into Europe, though they probably could. Um, they're kind of busy, you know, fighting this against the Ilkhanate and, you know, to their southeast. And they're freaking just posted up. So they're honestly, this is the only, this is the part of the horde that I'd be fired up to be part of because you just get to post up at this point. But they have their stresses, basically just empire stresses of, you know, we have this people that we're we're ruling over that we've conquered. They're a conquered people. They're not happy. They're paying taxes to us, definitely unfairly, probably unfairly amount, and uh, fucking. They just have to play different factions of Russian Empire against each other and be like, oh, yeah, well, you guys can attack there. And, you know, basically all these vassages um, 
and you know they need to pledge allegiance to them and all that type of stuff dude stand up and just pledge allegiance to the flag of friggin mongolia dude what up um they and i mentioned this pax mongolica which maybe you know we're sort of in that still but you have the um the golden horde capital they have a capital i mean who this is the first they have a capital of the city of sarai um in muslim culture demands for more mosques and like bathhouses and and just to practice your religion and everything so that's going to make you more stationary and stable you're not going to be moving around and conquering so by that conversion to islam played a big role in a change in lifestyle not just religion but also empire building and, and planting roots so it strengthens the horde but um you know we have another turn point here because uh, we're now coming into the area of the black death which is a plague so that sets things into major economic decline and causes uh and gives the russian populace a window to rise up start striking back at the horde maybe scoring some freaking victories dude so that's freaking gnarly dude um and basically we'll get into a little topsy turvy up and down of the horde um and take you up to the end but before we get to that dude let me remind you bro let me remind you that this episode is brought to you by Dadgrass, legal organic hemp that relaxes your body and mellows your dome, dude. It's not that powerful weed that's going around these days that just makes me question if my friends even like me. It makes me look in the mirror and be like, how, how many different versions of that? It's like I look in the mirror and I'm seeing a Picasso painting, which sounds beautiful, but really it's just too many perspectives. I'm like, I want one legit perspective this summer, and that's a mellow, relaxed perspective that Daggrass helps me achieve, dude. And I'm fired up on it. Dude, it's that one glass of wine, not the whole bottle. Don't need it. Just want to post up and relax, dude, and cruise back to a time, you know, when freaking... We were listening to music on vinyl, dude, that festival lifestyle, dude, when I can just post up on my balcony like I mentioned in the summer nights and undo the buttons of my button-down shirt and just, you know, f feel unjudged and just relaxed. So it's just that, you know, I just like to enjoy those effects of the CBD while keeping a clear head. That's all I'm saying, dude. And Daggrass does that the best, and I'm all about the pre-rolls, dude. You know that. Although do do have some tinctures that you can use and some other stuff if that's your if that's what you enjoy. So... You know, it's your dad grass. I want you to enjoy it how you like it, dude. But that's how I like it. Um, also, which is legit, is all dad grass products are federally legal for ages 18 and over. And it ships right to your door anywhere in the U.S. So go to dadgrass.com slash dank to check out their products. Dude, I'm fired up on the pre-rolls. You know that, dude. It's just a freaking, whether you're looking for a new buzz or a chill way to enjoy an old favorite, dude, dad grass will leave you in a euphoric mood, bro. So right now, Daggrass is offering our listeners 20% off your first order when you go to dadgrass.com slash dank. That's so go to dadgrass.com slash dank for 20% off your first order. That's dadgrass.com slash dank. All right, dude. So basically, quick recap, dude. Genghis Khan dies, splits up his empire among his four sons, dude, Orange County style, dude. You know, dad, look, dude, Trevor, you're going to do my gazebo extending business must continue. Trevor, you'll extend gazebos north of Huntington. Tanner, he'll extend gazebos south of Huntington. And we will not extend gazebos east. We will only extend them west. Except psych, dude, we got one son who's going to cruise a little more east, but really, in reality, it's more about west. That was a little bit confusing. Don't really listen to that gazebo extending recap because it doesn't quite capture what we're talking about, dude. Because what we're talking about, dude, is the Golden Horde extending west into Europe, dude. They're conquering Russia. They're posted up, dude. They're converted to Islam. They're basically being an empire now and informing the culture and practices and of for centuries to come. Uh, but, you know, right now the Black Death is there, dude. You know, you can't escape it. I don't care how good you are at riding a horse, dude. <laughs> You're going to freaking catch this freaking pandemic, bro. And uh, it has a massive impact economics on the military, uh, creates the window that Russia needs to rise up. They start scoring victories. And at this point, uh, the Russians have learned you know, they're not just posting up there, paying their taxes. They're they're writing an essay, bro. They're studying these military taxes. They're going, dude, we're getting our asses kicked. We can't let this happen again. And in fact, you know, maybe we got to give Mongols a taste of their own medicine, which they'll end up doing. So 
you get um, this decline, but which is briefly, sort of briefly put on hold um, when you have uh, this leader, Tok Tamish. He's a protege of Tamerlane. Tok Tamish, um, he besieges Moscow in 1382. Um, and he says he's not going to attack the city. Then he does, and they open the gates, and he just absolutely murders everyone when he goes into the uh, gates. Classic Mongol style, dude. Um, so there was already a loss of the, this big battle of Blue Water. The Russians scored a victory using um, um, whatever. Um, uh, scored a victory using Mongol tactics. Sorry about that, dude. I was looking at another no, uh, note here. And, you know, you got Lithuanians and Mongols and Russians fighting. And um, but now that the Moscow is besieged and the residents there are many of the residents there are murdered. Tokhtamesh, um, he uh, starts getting taxes and stuff and he's posting up. But here's the thing. He has that true Mongol instinct. He's saying, look, I want more. And he starts overreaching, dude, because he's scoring these victories. And he decides to turn on his own mentor, Temer Lane, who's like another, um, you know, leader of one of the uh, Khanates and he goes on a vengeful campaign because uh, uh, and he starts overreaching and then Temerlane sacks the Golden Horde city of Sarai burns the Golden Horde's land destroys its army and he fo forces Tokhtamesh to flee uh, he cruises to Lithuania and he tries and fails to retake it he loses and stuff and by this this point the Golden Horde is not what it was it's sort of um by like 1480 you know i mean they have like the peak of the mongol emperor we're past that i mean maybe they this that article i referenced was like basically when the conversion to islam is solidified maybe that's when they're like okay and you it's kind of not the mongol empire that it was it's transitioned into this sort of ruling body at least in the west here aka russia um so they're kind of still around um in 1480 uh you have uh, a big victory by uh, Ivan the Third. He drives the horde from Moscow finally, and that's like when Russia is established as a nation. Basically, before that, it was just you know groups of people. Europe was in this sort of you know you have um, a t you have the Huns, you have this Golden Horde, you have other conquering bodies from the east, and you know Europe. You ha do have these European countries you got you know Charlemagne's posted up and you have the continuation of the Roman Empire more west but you know you don't really get into these modern countries until you know slightly before these middle ages and uh or like before we're entering like this during this medieval era right after the dark ages but Russia is a little late to the show 1480 um then you get this kingdom of Lithuania and Poland 1487 1491 um but you know they're just basically always continually getting conquered and stuff and th up and through like world war one um but really what delivers the final blows like this golden hordes are existing all the way until 1502 and then you get the uh the crimean khanate he comes in and he's got ottoman patronage and the ottomans are dominating in the middle east now and he sacks the golden horde uh capital at sarai and at this point mongols are out it's now ottoman they're the rulers um and whoever's left, you know, from the horde like that, you either cruised back east, most likely you just assimilated into the uh, that now Khanate, the Crimean Khanate and the Ottoman Empire. And the Ottomans were known for being a, the British are the ones who kind of went into the Middle East, later, like literally they rule all the way until like World War One-ish. And, uh, and they ruled somewhat, you know, obviously there's battles always going on, but like there was religious freedom, you would pay taxes and it was whatever. Uh, so that era takes o the Ottomans take over at that point. Um, but what's interesting is you have um, a lot of cultural impact, you know, not just religion and everything from the Golden Horde. But what I liked to focus on was just like, and I mentioned it earlier, the Russian tactics. Um, and they start scoring battles like this one battle, the River Voza in 1378. This, this dude, Dmitry Donskoy. He adopted this Mongolian arc formation and he lures the enemy into a pincer movement. And so basically he's just using the exact um, tactics that were used to conquer them to then liberate, you know, his, his peoples and form his country. Um, you know, later on, he was dead by that point. But um, you have the, the Tartar light horsemen 
um, they became a feature of every European army prior to you know 20th century technological advancements. Um, they were using long cavalry lances, dude, and the saber, which is basically more of like a curved sword, better for riding, not like a broad sword, where you could like use a lance, dismount someone, then go to saber, slice them down. And the most famous weapon um, is the Tout's bow, held in a sheath and uh, covered in a quiver of arrows. And this is like, or it's like this, it's called like a sadak, and it was just it was a. Uh, it served like a status symbol in Russia. So like this Mongolian bow and arrow, which like the skilled riders were known for, they would ride past you. You know, you'd have guys on lances and then sabers take you out. And then anyone that was on the ground or anything after that, then you'd have these arrowed riders going around and they were so skilled, they would flip backwards in their seat, shoot an arrow, all while riding a freaking horse super fucking fast and snipe you with an arrow while going. So unbelievably gnarly, unbelievably skilled warriors. And uh, these tactics were taken on. I mean, I don't think you'd get quite as much arrow usage on uh, while mounted. You know, I'm sure some Russian dudes were good at it, but like really it was just, it was uh, innate. It was ingrained in, in Mongol. But this is one of the more interesting things is uh, one of the best traditions. Like when you think of a cavalry charge, you know, sometimes you think of that trumpet like, and then what do you hear after that? You hear like a yell, right? Like a hurrah, that yell came from mongolians and the like it was the cry of hurrah and it came from the root word of er meaning to hit so it would be like er like they would go raw and it just meant like hit like it was actually a, a command f in uh, for mongolians and then it just became this thing that was so badass and probably so terrifying that like the russians just would do it um and then i mean i would think you you would even get like the even up to the American Civil War, like you would get, uh, things would derive off of that. Like you'd have the rebel yell, right? Which was like kind of a yelp, but it was supposed to, it was actually fearsome. But when you hear it, it sounds like, although it's kind of crazy, there was no audio recordings of it. But when you like, just through the ages of people sharing about it, it kind of sounds sort of schmoly. People are like, yeah, woo, yeah. Woo, 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 yeah, woo. And you're like, all right, I'm supposed to be scared of that. I guess it's kind of wily. Any yelling in the distance isn't good, dude. Yeah. You shouldn't have a skateboard if you also don't like yelling or <laughs> loud noises, dude. Invisalign and if, if decibel levels upset you. If you know what decibel levels are, dude, you shouldn't, shouldn't have a skateboard, dude. And I mean, dude, that's basically a brief history of it, dude. It's, you know, <clears throat> this stuff was probably you probably wondering, oh, well, what about the other three? Um, Khanates and it's like you know they probably they had similar ups and downs and stuff this one's interesting just because it cruised into Russia cruised west you know and um, maybe this person was interested in it who wrote it in but I forgot their their name but I was interested to learn about it didn't even know about it I thought it was going to be like some cool golden horde like oh the premier skilled riders of Genghis Khan and like his like you know like chess level pieces like in the movie the 300 like those dudes that were like the ghost gold masks like maybe they wore sick ass masks but you know so maybe i was a little let down to you know though the aesthetic was basically probably just derived from the uh i think they did get actually a lot of gold trading too so maybe economically like during that pax mongolica there was something that said like oh you know they brought a lot of wealth to the region well really to themselves but there was a lot of trade prosperity going on that trickled down maybe that's one of the things but really it was like oh they had gold colored tents it's probably just what it was, which is friggin' sick. Um, it's tight, dude. So I was friggin' fired up to learn about it, but I was not stoked. I wish that there was would have been a little more myth to it, a little more sick ass stuff. But the fact that they were skilled ass horse riders, dude, used lances, sabers, and b bows and arrows, dude, and friggin' just pretty sick, dude. And then the fact that you know what made them so strong also brought them down. So you know maybe there's a lesson to be learned for that you know every sword has two edges but not a saber actually it doesn't <laughs> <laughs> even though they uh got taken down well i guess there's two edges but one of them is actually not a uh striking edge um all right dude let's do a few questions and bone out it yeah. um what up strider lady stoker here um you want uh alana 
And she says, huge fan. Let's go, dude. I'm writing you today looking for some advice. It's about my dank BF. He and I have been dating since February and everything has been going great. We are totally in love and everything is great except I found out he still kisses his mom on the mouth. I knew he was close with his mom. I've not yet met her, but he mentioned this to me recently. He's 27-year-old man, uh, a little younger than me, 31, but in my opinion, too old to be kissing his mom on the lips. He has also brought up other things about his mom, how he is not personally religious, but he is involved in the church and doing readings on Easter Sunday at it because it's important to his mom. Personally, I would never let anything I didn't want to do. Uh, I would never do anything I didn't want to do, so I am having trouble understanding where he is coming from. I hope you can offer some guidance how to address this with him. Do I let it go? Is it fine? Should I even be bothered by this? Thanks, my dude. Alana. Um, all right, dude. I mean, look, I mentioned a story, dude, when my boy AJ kissed his dad on the lips one time, and it was an unbelievable situation where... Um, we were all hanging out, about to go out and rage, dude. And we were pre-gaming at his house, dude. Very nice of his parents to let us pre-game at their house. And, you know, cabs were there. We're cruising out. And his mom's standing up. And he gives his mom a regular hug. No smooch. And then his dad is sitting down reading, you know, conservative literature. And sitting down, like, at a table. And my my bro goes up behind his dad. So, like, and gives him, like, a from the top down hug. And then his dad looks up. And then from AJ standing up and looks down and they both kiss exactly on the lips. And all the bros saw this and we were like talking and all of us just kind of got quiet and we're like, mm, okay, um, <laughs> we'll just walk outside now. And then we got outside and we go, what the fuck was that, dude? It was like, I remember when I was like seven, I was like, I wanted to stop kissing my dad on the cheek. I just don't know. Maybe it was just about like domination where I was like, I don't, I don't need to kiss you because I don't want to kiss you. And even like, I don't even like kiss my mom on the cheek really. But look, there's the SNL sketch about this, the Vogel checks. Some families express love differently, but I for sure think kissing your mom on the mouth is a no-no, dude. Yeah. Um, just personally. So I think you are not wrong to be bothered by that. That's sort of a cultural thing, and I think you are in the majority there. As far as the reading stuff on Easter Sunday and, like, you don't do things you don't want to, think you got it in life you just gotta kind of step up and do things you don't want to now i don't know how christian he is but you know if he's doing it because his mom's happy makes his mom happy that it does a reading i mean that's fine i mean it will probably create some annoying stuff later in life like say you guys get married his mom's gonna be like i want you to meet this priest father sebastian or something and then you gotta like talk to a priest and he's like well my mom wants it and yeah. it's like you know that's that's, an, that's, that's annoying. what she's that's what she's getting at really is that this could lead to more stuff. That's what I mean. So I think your conversation is about setting, you know, boundaries are important and having that talk and, you know, it's timing too. Like if you have that talk too, too early, you know, he might be like, whoa, whoa, whoa blah, blah, blah. But and, and get worried or like, maybe I, we're not a good match. And it's like, no, you guys can still be a good match. No matter who you're going to be with, shit's going to annoy you about someone. I mean, also be grateful that the thing that he doesn't do is like, he's not like, you know, sorry, I go on this vacation with my family for a week at a time and we all wear robes. And it's like, well, what happens there? I can't tell you, but we do it, you know? And it's like, well, okay, that's weird. I mean, at least he's upfront about this stuff. It's lame. He's 27, you know, he's, he's, you know, he's probably a mama's guy. I mean, you know, I'm kind of a mama's guy. My dad ass fiance even said that one time. I'm like, just say boy, it's fine. Um, but definitely don't kiss my mom on the mouth, dude. So I think you're not, at all wrong to be bothered by this i think have a good conversation with him about it how do you address i'd say wait a little bit you guys have been dating how long did you say four months since, since february. february it's what february seven months wait a year dude well i say you haven't met the parents yet like yeah meet them first and then just you know decide for yourself is his mom kissable like you know then go that's for true it. then go for it you know dude this is a good call if his mom's super hot <laughs> Fuck, dude, Alana, that's a good way, dude. Ilana, that's a fucking good call, dude, Aaron. If his mom's, like, super smoky style, then, like, here's the thing, dude. You gotta, you probably should talk to him and be like, why aren't you using tongue, you know? <laughs> gotta ask him that, dude. He's like, yeah, I breastfed till I was 26. You know, pretty chill. <sighs> Starts reading Greek literature, dude. I did. Oedipus was a sick dude, you know? Like, sick, but in a chill way. You know? 
So, Aaron, that's a good ass call, dude. <laughs> yeah, his mom's hot and like rides dirt bikes. Yeah. Maybe his mom likes to grab him by the neck a little bit and give him a kiss. That's cool. Maybe he's into that. <laughs> I'll tell you this. Definitely meet the parents first, you know, and do all that. So, but yeah, I mean, in all sincerity, you are okay to be bothered by that. Talk. Open, honest communication. You know what I'm saying? You can always start by being like, hey, I know this is a little bit annoying of me and blah, blah, blah. But, you know, I just think here... And then, you know, don't get don't get too slippery slopey in the talk. But then I just think when we're getting married, it's going to have to be in a church. It's like, nah, dude, it's going to be up to you guys. You'll cross that bridge when you get to it. All right, let's do one more than bone out. This is not even a question. This is a write-in about the dogs episode. Strider, I've had most of the dogs, including Portillo's, but not the Alaskan one. And the best is the Polish boy or Polish girl, which is just as good. There's a place called Hot Sauce Williams in Cleveland, which has the best Polish boy and girl, which happens to be the best dog I've ever had. They're in a little bit of a rough area of Cleveland, but it's one of the best things I've stuck in my mouth. Have a great day, Mike. I like that. One of the best things I've stuck in my mouth. There was also a guy who had a correction, but I'm fucking forgetting what it was, dude. Um, uh, there's one more right in here, but it's too long. I think we're going to bone out. Is the um, correction about the hot dogs? Or? Yeah, he's like, there was a ingredient on one of the dogs that was a little different but it wasn't even that crazy it was i think it was like what was the one in st louis i think it was that dog that had like slaw on it and it's like oh it doesn't have to have slaw like you can choose to put that and i was like well all right but before i talk too much s on that correction i got to figure out what it is in any case freaking fired up for another epic history of dank dude the golden horde bro or as or as convertible Craig would say, ha <laughs> ha, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, <laughs> fired up on another app, dude. Stay stoked. Check out the Patreon, dude. Get yourself some dad grass. And uh, we'll catch you on freaking the next episode, dude. And stay stoked until then. All right, dude. Let. <laughs>